St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from Julie Wombeck from Kelowna, British Columbia. This Mass is offered for the living and deceased members of the Blaise, Wombeck, and Yomoka families. By choosing to remember the deceased members of your family in this way, you are joined by thousands of people across Canada, and on their behalf, I thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And your spirit. My friends, today we celebrate the Feast of the Guardian Angels. And let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in your unfathomable providence are pleased to send your holy angels to guard us, hear our supplication as we cry to you, that we may always be defended by their protection and rejoice eternally in their company. Through Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord spoke to Moses and the people during their journey across the desert wilderness. I am going to send an angel in front of you to guard you on the way and to bring you to the place that I have prepared. Be attentive to him and listen to his voice. Do not rebel against him, for he will not pardon your transgression, for my name is in him. But if you listen attentively to his voice and do all that I say, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and a foe to your foes. My angel will go in front of you. The word of the Lord. The angels of the Lord will guard you in all your ways. The angel of the Lord will guard you in all your ways. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find stalks in darkness, or the destruction that wastes at Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Bless the Lord, all you angels, you ministers who do God's will. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus called a child whom he put among them and said, Truly, I tell you, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. Take care that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you, their angels continually see the face of my Father in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. The angels of the Lord will guard you in all your ways. The verse of our psalm today indicates the importance which we attach to the presence of God's angels in our lives. In fact, the devotion among Catholics to our guardian angels reveals an ancient and ongoing relationship between human beings and these special celestial beings who have a specific mandate to guide us in our journey through life. In my family, I am the first of five siblings, mom and dad showed us how we were to pray at the beginning and at the end of each day. As soon as we were old enough to kneel by our bedsides, our parents taught us the prayer to the guardian angel. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love Commit me here, ever this day, be at my side, to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. The devotion to the garden angels is well established in our society. In Canada, we have the beautiful Église des Anges Gardiens in Lachine, Quebec, as well as municipalities by that name near Beaupre, Buckingham, and Nicolet. There are two parishes in the Toronto Archdiocese named Garden Angels, one of the oldest in Orillia and one of the newest in Brampton. There is Garden Angels Church in Vancouver, and in the U.S., Garden Angel is the name of the cathedral in Las Vegas, where visitors would likely appreciate some guidance. The devotion is well established, and for good reasons. God dwells with the humble, and he looks upon them with compassion. His angels watch over them as guardians. God has not left us alone in our struggle to avoid evil and to choose good. The scriptures are full of examples of how the angels serve as messengers and protectors. Angels ministered to Jesus after his temptation in the wilderness and during his agony in the Garden of Gethsemane, and angels will be present at Christ's return, which they will announce to serve at his judgment. The angels show us that this universe, which God created, is not just materialistic. God gives us the help of his angels as spiritual weapons to resist the devil and his lies. Through the gift of the Holy Spirit, we too join with the heavenly choirs of angels in singing the praises of God. Today's feast invites us to reflect particularly on our faith in Jesus Christ and how our devotion to the garden angels helps us to put that faith into practice. Would it not be wonderful if the care of the garden angels could invigorate us in our effort to be witnesses of Christ and extend care and compassion to others. 
This is the compassion that brings healing and new life to the world. Look at the example of Mother Teresa of Calcutta, who listened to that inner voice directing her to devote her life to caring for the poorest of the poor. Mother Teresa brought precious comfort to those dying on the streets of Calcutta. Look at the example of Jean Vanier, who began to welcome the intellectually challenged to his home in Trois-les-Brailles, northeast of Paris. He went on to develop the large communities that provide a loving family environment to those who otherwise might end up isolated or institutionalized. The spirit of care and compassion within our heart is a gift from God. It yearns to be put into practice. When someone whom we know becomes sick, why do we advise our parish church to include them in prayer? When someone who is dear to us dies, why do we ensure that their names are included in the list of the intercessions at Mass for the faithful departed? Is it to honor them? In a way, yes, but at a more profound level, we pray for them to look after them, to care for them spiritually, and to assist them in their journey towards healing, wholeness, and fullness of life. Our prayer on behalf of our friends in need is an example, an expression of the compassion that God has placed in our hearts to allow his stream of grace to flow through us and to build up his kingdom on earth. I conclude my homily with another traditional prayer to the garden angel. My good angel, you come from heaven. God has sent you to take care of me. Oh, shelter me under your wings. Lighten my path, direct my steps. Do not leave me, stay quite near me, and defend me against the spirit of evil. But above all, come to my help in the last struggle of my life. Deliver my soul so that with you I may praise, love, and contemplate the goodness of God forever and ever. Amen. My friends, let us now gather all the intentions that well from our hearts and present them to our compassionate Father. We pray for all religious and civil leaders that the Holy Spirit may bless them with the wisdom to govern in self-giving sacrifice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, homebound, in hospitals and nursing homes, and for their caregivers, may they know the peace and consolation that comes from serving the Lord in prayer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, for all who carry in their hearts a vocation to serve the Lord as priests, as brothers and sisters in the religious life, and as deacons, may they respond generously to their call and share their gifts in service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the spiritual and particular needs of our viewer audience, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Eternal Father, source of all life, goodness, and compassion. Graciously receive, we pray, these petitions that we lift up to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Yes. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through goodness we have received the wine we offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed is the Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the offerings we bring before you as we venerate your holy angels and graciously grant that under their constant protection we may be delivered from present dangers and brought happily to life eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. We up the Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and ever, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, and to praise you without end in your archangels and angels for the honor we pay the angelic creatures in whom you delight redounds to your own surpassing glory, and by their great dignity and splendor, you show how infinitely great you are to be exalted above all things through Christ our Lord. Through him, the multitude of angels extols your majesty, and we are united with them in exultant adoration, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once again giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Benedict our Pope and Thomas our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, the kingdom, the power, and the glory of God, is now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And Let us share a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to enter under my roof. Only say the word. My soul shall be healed. Would those of you at home join with me now in this prayer for sanctification? Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, fill me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh, good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Suffer me not to be separated from you. From the malicious enemy, defend me. In the hour of my death, call me and bid me come unto you, that with your saints I may praise you forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. As you are pleased to nourish us for eternal life with so great a sacrament, O Lord, direct us by the ministry of angels into the way of salvation and peace through Christ our Lord. I to mention that for eight years I was pastor of Guardian Angels Church in Aurelia and was assigned to my present parish. The previous pastor was assigned to begin the newest parish of the diocese at a time, named after the Guardian Angels, so it's quite a tradition in my priesthood. And for five years, I was assigned to St. Michael's Cathedral in Toronto, where the images of angels numbered in the dozens, and the statues in the windows and the various works of art around the church, the devotion to the angels, our garden angels and all angels, is deeply rooted in our Catholic faith. 
it is an extension of our belief in God's infinite providence and God's ongoing love for us. My friends, the Lord be with you. May the Lord God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Our thanks to Julie Wombeck from Kelowna, British Columbia, whose generous contribution made the televising of today's Mass possible. If you're interested in making monthly donations using the pre-authorized checking method, please call our office at 1-888-383-6277 for details. Voices from Vancouver, B.C. You are all very dear to me and my husband. Thank you so much for all your sacrifices. We sometimes watch and pray the Holy Mass three to four times a day when the sermon is inspiring. You serve us so wonderfully, and we hope for many more years to come. From Peterborough, Ontario, as with so many others across Canada, the Mass means so much to me as I no longer drive and have no close family to drive me to church. I always get something from the homilies and pray a spiritual communion because I'm not able to actually receive. I very much treasure the prayers read after communion and also when the personal reactions of viewers are read. Voices from across the country. Your voices. Voices of faith that are an inspiration to us all.